Hey folks, Mavs Dad here with another watch review. I've got something really special for you today. This is the new Seiko Prospects SRP637, or what they're calling the new baby tuna. Now the DHL delivery guy just delivered this about 15 minutes ago, so I'm really excited to open this thing up and show you all what this watch looks like. Now this is not the typical Seiko watch packaging, and I'm not quite sure why some of these watch sites do this. Some of those like second tier watch sites like Creation Watches where I got this one from, or Authentic Watches or World of Watches, they are actually based in Singapore where many of these Seikos are made. See, either Singapore or uh, Japan are where most of these are made. But for some reason when you buy from these sites, you don't get all of the authentic, I wouldn't say that, not authentic, you don't get all of the original Seiko packaging. Now this is a, an, an authentic Seiko watch box and these are authentic Seiko manuals, but I know for a fact that this watch didn't originally come in this box. And again, I'm not quite sure why they do that. Maybe it's a cost saving measure or a shipping you know, saving measure, I'm not quite sure. But anyway, let's take a look at this thing and I'll show you. Now first, like I said, here's the original Seiko warranty manual with the warranty card. Again, 100% authentic, real deal. And this is the user manual. Again, a real authentic Seiko user manual. But I know for a fact that this watch didn't originally come in this box because it doesn't fit. This is probably a Seiko watch box for another model. Because if you look at this thing, it does not fit on the watch pillow in the box. If you try to do it like that and shut it, it's just too big. And this is not an authentic Seiko watch pillow. I guess... Um, uh, Creation watches just bought these by the thousands to you know put in different watch boxes. I'm not quite sure, but this is an authentic Seiko watch box. Anyway, a little confused, but it did come with the original Seiko Prospects hang tag, right there, as you can see. And I'm not worried about the authenticity of the watch at all. I know it's a real Seiko watch. It just befuddles me <laughs> why they don't include all the original packing. Not quite sure why they do that. Anyway, let's take a look at this thing. We'll talk about all the specs and everything and the, the watch build quality and all that good stuff. All right, so what I'll do is I'll put the specs up on the left-hand side of the screen. You're looking at a 47 millimeter case. Now I don't count the crown with that because you really don't count the crown when you're talking about actual case size. So you're looking at a 47 millimeter case, you're looking at a 22 millimeter bracelet and it tapers right here all the way down to 22. You're looking at 14 millimeters thick, okay? You have a 4R36 windable and hackable movement, uh, and that also allows you a 41 hour power reserve. Of course, you have Seiko's proprietary Hardlex crystal and Seiko's proprietary LumaBright luminescent paint. And I'll show you a little example of how bright that paint is here in a few minutes. You're looking at 200 meters water resistant, which is 660 feet. You have a screw down crown right there at four o'clock, and you have a unidirectional bezel. And it has a really nice click action on the bezel, really tight, not a lot of play in it at all. And because of the shroud, you only have access to the bezel between 12 and three and between six and nine, as you can see right there and right there. Now basically what this watch is to me, is basically a black, a little bit bigger black monster with a shroud on it. And that's basically what it is. And if you notice the old black monster had this very similar style face to it. And what I'll do is I'll actually bring out the new Seiko Black Monster and we'll do a little bit of comparison here. Now this is a Black Monster I'm actually getting ready to sell. And if you notice, this comes in original Seiko packaging. You have the, the outer cover, the white outer cover, the typical Seiko kind of pale royal blue box. Seiko watch pillow, Seiko, man, Seiko manuals, you know, the hang tag. This is what I'm used to seeing. Now I know for a fact this is a legitimate watch, but I'm just not quite sure again why they don't include all of the original Seiko packaging from some of these other different types of watch sites. Not quite sure, but anyway, let's do a little bit of comparison here. It's not really gonna be much of a comparison because these are very, very similar watches. All right, now you're looking at a size difference, okay? The new baby tuna, or what I basically like to call the new black monster on steroids, uh, it's a little bit bigger. Of course, it does have the shroud. And if you notice, it also has the Prospects logo right above the word automatic right there. Because Seiko's actually allowed Prospects to be sold in the United States now, which is really cool. And if you also look, I mean, they're very similar. Same Hardlex crystal, 
same LumaBright luminescent paint, same style bezel, just a little bit bigger on the new baby tuna. Now I wish they had done this. The new Black Monster has that knurled, has a knurled style crown right there. It's really, really, really easy to grip. The old Black Monster has the same crown that this new baby tuna does right here. It's just not quite as easy to grip. I mean, can you grip it with no problem? Yeah. But on the new Black Monster, it's just a little bit easier to grip. And that's one feature, one thing about this, the only complaint that I have about this watch is really the crown. I mean, it has you know smooth crown action, time setting, all that stuff is very easy, but I wish they had used the crown off the new Black Monster right here. So there you go. Now let's do a loom test on this thing. What I'll do is I'll charge it up and then we'll kill the studio light and you'll see how bright this thing is. Now right here, this is a mag light. If, if you don't have one of these, I recommend you get one. These are the absolute best flashlights on the planet. This is the LED model. I'm sure y'all are really familiar with mag lights, but this is, I think the 5D, 5D model. This is just a great, great flashlight. These were police issue for a long time. Anyway, I, I digress. Let's go ahead and charge this thing up. It only takes a couple seconds. We'll charge it up, kill the studio light. And now you see how bright this thing is. I mean, it'll glow at about 75% of that brightness for hours. Sega's LumaBright is absolutely legendary in the watch world for how bright and how long this thing will glow like this. I absolutely love it. The only thing I think even comes even vaguely close is uh, some of the uh, luminescent paint on uh, Citizen watches, that kind of pale blue, but nobody can touch Seiko's LumaBright. It's just the best out there, period. You know, for, for you know, sub three, $400 watches, it's really awesome to get a feature like this that you would expect on, you know, a, a fine Swiss watch. So there you go. Let's go ahead and turn this thing back on. All right, what I'll also do is I'll also go ahead and put this on my wrist because I know a lot of you get a little irritated with me if I don't try these on. So let's take a look at this thing on the wrist. Now, fortunately for me, these come pre-sized perfectly. I'm a big guy and um, these come pre-sized perfectly right out of the box. But if you need to tighten it up, which I'm actually probably gonna have to tighten this one up a little bit, it's a little bit small. You have four micro adjustments right here, which make it really easy right there. And I'll probably have to slide this over maybe one or two, but you got four micro adjustments to make this watch fit you perfectly. And uh, this feels really good on the wrist, has great wrist presence. I like the fact that it's a little bit bigger than the new Black Monster. I really like the shroud. The shroud really makes it look tough. I mean, this is just a manly, manly, this watch is just dripping testosterone. I love this thing. Wow. So there you go. All right. I'm trying to think of anything that I might have forgotten about the watch. I also wanted to show you all the dive extension feature on the bracelet. It's real easy. You just pop the bracelet open. And then right underneath here, you see a folded section of the bracelet. You just pop that out. Take your bracelet, slide it forward just a little bit, and it unhooks. And that gives you about a half an inch to fit over a wetsuit. And like I said, any good dive watch is going to have a dive extension feature on the bracelet. And to put it back in, you just hook it over again, pop the section back up, and there you go. Really easy and a necessity for any good dive watch. I forgot if I mentioned, you can see the new Pro the Seiko Prospect logo engraved on the case back right there, as well as Air Divers 200 and the, uh, the usual Seiko Tsunami right in the middle there. And there's the Prospects logo. I'm really happy Seiko decided to release these Prospects models in the United States. I mean, these are just killer. They just have a killer lineup of dive watches, man. All the way up to the, you know, you have some of the Grand Seiko Spring Drives, which are run about five grand. But if you want an entry level dive watch, you, you can't do any better than a Seiko, either a Black Monster or this new Baby Tuna. And what I'll do is I'll put a picture up of a regular Baby Tuna up on the left hand side of the screen to show you why they're calling this the new Baby Tuna. And it's really just because of the addition of the shroud, the stainless steel shroud. And they had another model, like I said, I can't remember if I mentioned this before earlier, 
But they had another model of this new model baby tuna that had a plastic shroud. And I don't think that was going over too well. So that's why I changed it to stainless steel. I think the plastic one was discoloring and cracking and chipping. And on, on a nice watch like this, a nice diver, entry level diver, you don't want to use plastic. I mean, you use, use metal. So there you go. And I think that's pretty much about it. One other thing, if you look at the, the dial, I love the fact that these indexes are raised and they all have a little chrome bezel around each one. And I'll try to turn it around here, spin around so you can kind of catch it in the light. It looks even tougher in person. It looks really nice. Gives the watch face a lot of depth to it. Really, really nice. So that's pretty much it, folks. Um, if you like this watch review, please click on like. If you want to subscribe to my channel, please do so. I've got a ton of new subscribers, and I really, really, really appreciate that. I'll put a little reminder of that in the lower right-hand corner. If you have any questions or comments, please put those in the comment section. And I'll go ahead and put a link to this on uh, Creation Watches down in the description field. You can get this for right under $300, about $295. If you go to eBay, you can get it for about even $20 less. And again, that's going to be from one of those watch companies, one of those watch sites that doesn't include all of the original watch packaging, but the watch itself is legit. Again, it just confounds me, confuses me, befuddles me. I'm trying to think of any other word I can think of as to why they do that. But maybe it's just a cost-saving measure, not quite sure. So folks, if you have any other questions, like I said, put those in the uh, comment section. I'll answer those as fast as I can. But until the next review, again, this has been the new Seiko Prospects SRP637, or what they're calling the new Baby Tuna. And I'll see you all in the next review. Take care. Bye-bye.